Hey YouTube, Shukun Shinobi here. Um, this is going to be a really weird video. I decided not to film myself because uh, I was basically cleaning the den all day. I kind of look like crap. Um, it's really late. I should probably go to bed, but I'm going to rant about Power Ranger toys instead because that's what I do. Um, so yeah, basically I will put up a picture of something here for you to stare at while you listen, but there will be nothing of relevance in the actual video itself, so if you want to go to a website and do something while I ramble, feel free, go right ahead, there's nothing to actually look at here. So, um, yeah, I, I put up the the Super Mega Force reviews um, over the course of the last couple days, and uh, for the record, I'm not getting the action feature figures that do the, like, shooting and stuff. Um, basically with Super Mega Force, I'm getting the Zord Builder stuff. I haven't decided on the cycles yet. I think they're coming with keys, so I'll probably pick them up. Um, the Deluxe Weapons, I picked up the Morpher, obviously. Um, I'm not 100% sure how I'm getting the basic weapons. It kind of depends on what's in them and if they come with keys. Uh, basically, kind of whatever comes with keys I feel I need, then I'll pick it up. Otherwise, I'm probably going to skip it. So I'm not getting, like, the play sets. I'm not getting the action feature figures. I'm not getting the masks or anything like that. So it's going to be a lot slower than it was with, uh, with Megaforce um, proper, since I'm not actually getting as much toys. Uh, so now that that's out of the way, um, the comments in these videos are... For the most part, actually really fun. Um, you get some people that are really into Power Rangers that um, are fully supportive of it. And then on the flip side, you have the people that um, hate Power Rangers and will bash it regardless. Uh, you have the people that have blind hatred toward Bandai America. Uh, and you don't really get too many people that absolutely adore Bandai America. I don't think anyone adores Bandai America. But... Um, I just kind of wanted to clear the air on my thoughts. I discuss it a lot on Twitter, uh, not so much in any of my actual videos. But in a nutshell, whenever I actually give a PR toy a positive review, which is usually most of the time, um, the, the comments always explode with, wow, this toy is absolute crap. Um, Bandai America is Satan. Uh, that has been said before. Uh, so it, there's varying degrees of negativity. And I just kind of wanted to to talk about my thoughts about everything. Uh, so it's going to be kind of just a big ramble. But see, the, the way that I see it is the, the toys that Bandai America release... Uh, for the most part, there are exceptions. Like the, uh, the Mega Blade was really cool. Uh, the Ghost Save Morpher is, at the core, a very exceptional toy. Um, and I don't mind the, legend, the Legendary Morpher at all. It does exactly what I figured it was going to do in a format that is exactly what I figured. Um, it is basically a Mobirates with a lamer voice, because it's not Mobirates voice, and you can't really beat the Mobirates voice. Uh, so it's a mobile with a lamer voice and no keypad. I wasn't expecting a keypad because we haven't had a workable keypad in a toy over here since Wild Force, maybe? Something like that? But anyway, I wasn't expecting a keypad. So, yeah. Um, there is flaws about it, of course. The fact that it doesn't say, like, Mighty Morphin, <clears throat> excuse me, Mighty Morphin Red, uh, and stuff like that is a little bit of a... Pain. I think that would have been really cool and definitely doable, but um, I'm sure there's reasons. They might just be lazy. That's a probability, too. Possibility, not probability. But, um, anywho, that's exactly what I figured. Um, the Legendary Megazord, it could use some more paint apps, of course, but at the core, it does exactly what Gokaio does. It is five things that combine into a pirate-esque robot. Uh, yeah, it doesn't open. That's not a big deal. Um, it is made to play with the other Zord Builder toys, so it's probably not going to open. Uh, truth be told, and I said this in the video, I wasn't a fan of Gokaio, period. 
I hated the opening gimmick. I thought it was really stupid. Uh, it basically created a bunch of hollowed out pieces uh, that just really weren't all that fun. And then the opening gimmick was a basic flaw in the first place that um, barely actually opened properly. Uh, and that's another thing. And then the flaps uh, ended up kind of getting in the way. And I, I think aesthetic-wise, um, the, the flaps on Gokaio were heavily flawed and they just ended up making the combinations look really stupid. Um, since the flaps won't be there on the American versions, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing how things work out. I think the pieces are going to be a lot bulkier, but in some aspects it's actually more accurate to the show. When um, I was looking at some of the pictures... Uh, the Magi Dragon formation uh, for Magi Gokaio or whatever it was called um, had these little tiny, tiny claws that popped out and went toward the feet. While these ones actually pretty much engross the entire foot, like the suit in the show. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how some of these work out. And I think for the most part we're going to find that it ends up being a little bit more um, closer to the suit in the show as opposed to how blocky and weird uh gokaio was so we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with that but i'm i'm really looking forward to it uh like i said there are a lot of paint applications missing um most kids don't really care too much about paint applications they care about function and at the core it functions fine yeah the other pieces aren't going to flip open but the main chest still flips down uh, so it at least has some bit of emulation with the show. Uh, and like I said, I didn't like the flip-out gimmick in the first place, so I'm not bothered at all. At least with the mecha, I understand some people, um, kind of fixation with the Japanese version. Um, it's bigger, it has more paint apps, um, the gimmicks are intact, uh, for the most part, usually. Well, obviously, since they started with it, but that's not my point. Uh that you kind of want to gravitate towards that. And so I completely understand that. I think given the choice, most people would go for the Japanese version because it's obviously the more superior toy. But here we go into the next argument. The fact that these... The, the Power Rangers toy line in general is a toy line aimed at kids. Um, now, on the flip side to the argument, the Super Sentai toy line is a toy line aimed at Japanese kids, um, ranging from toddlers to about 8 to 10 years old. That's a huge span. And it boils down to the, the differences between Japanese economy and American economy. Um, it is clear through sales that the Japanese have absolutely no problem with popping into a Japanese Toys R Us, plopping down 8,000 yen, and getting Kyoryujin. Um, 8,000 yen would roughly translate to about $80. The exchange rate's almost one-to-one -one right now, which is absolutely phenomenal. Incredibly happy about that, but that's not the point. Uh, so about $80. Uh, that is the equivalent of... Almost three of our Megazords. Um, about, I would say, two Megazords and a Zord vehicle or something like that. Uh, so you, you have to keep in mind that most American parents uh, won't go into a toy store and drop $80 on one toy of that size and that quality. Now, I'm not saying that Japanese is bad quality. The quality of the Japanese toys are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but you you have to see it as the fact that this is, at least Gokaio is concerned, a roughly foot-tall plastic robot that is five bricks that combine into a bigger brick. Uh, and in Gokaio's case, it flips open and a bunch of flaps start waving around. Uh, randomly. And I don't think too many people are going to drop $80 on that for their kid who watches the show and wants something to play with. 
Meanwhile, our versions of the, just focusing on the, the robots right now, our versions of the Megazord cost, um, it was $32.99 at Toys R Us, $29.99 average retail, and they dropped to $24.99 pretty quick during Megaforce. Uh, so you're looking at about $25 to $30, give or take, for, which is essentially the same designed robot uh, with lesser paint applications, which again, I pointed out, most American kids aren't going to care about the paint applications. They want something to play with. And it, at the core, does the same exact thing. It is five bricks I combine into a bigger brick. Uh, so basically, it boils down to economics. It's not going to sell. Um, Jungle Fury was the last toy line, barring the, the Shinkano release from Toys R Us, uh, that had the, the Japanese molds used. And that was only for Jungle Pride and Jungle Master. Everything else was in a new transforming line, which eventually became the, the Zord Builder line. Uh, but that's an entirely different story. Uh, and those retailed for forty dollars, which compared to uh, Geki Toja's Japanese price, uh, was about twenty dollars cheaper than the Japanese version. Um, it did not have lights. It still had the motorized gimmick, but as far as I remember, both of them didn't have lights. But I don't think Jungle Master had lights in the first place. So you're looking at the same toy with no lights. Uh, I'm pretty sure paint applications were the same on those. Uh, so virtually no difference, but the issue was that they weren't selling. Um, Power Rangers wasn't big enough at the time to sell $40 robots. Uh, and Transformers has the same issue. The bigger scale figures like that Optimus and Predaking, which are $40 to $60, don't sell whatsoever at all. Um, in fact, I think the Voyagers even shelf warm pretty hardcore, and those are only 20 something. Uh, and truth be told, toys just don't sell for crap here in the U.S. anyway anymore. Um, I worked at Toys R Us from October 2012 through June of 2013, um, quitting only because I wanted to focus on videos and my work with CS Toys. There's a text message. Uh, and... So, the, the, we, there's obviously a ton of sales. You get a lot of sales in video games, and um, the younger kids, are, a lot more girls' toys sell than boys' toys, actually. Um, but anyway, it, it's just not as big of a business anymore. So you're really trying to get as much sales as you can. And if they still did the import the Japanese molds for the robots... Um, and the morphers, for that matter, it wouldn't be feasible in the economics to actually function. Uh, to I mean, looking at the import for Shinkano, they're marketing that at $90. Uh, granted, that is aimed for collectors, and there's probably a Toys R Us charge in there, so let's just give or take, say, $75 um, for that. So, really... That's not selling either. Um, I, in fact, I haven't seen one sell, period. I know a couple have sold when I was working there because they would be gone, obviously. But during my shifts, I never actually seen one sell. Uh, on the contrary, during my shifts, I seen a ton of kids buy Power Ranger toys. Um, it wasn't in droves, and it wasn't consistent, but I seen several Gosei Great Megazord sell, several of the figures, the Zord vehicles, um, even the little gimmicky action figures. Power Ranger toys did sell. It wasn't massive, it wasn't quick, but they sold. Uh, so to say that no kids buy them is an absolute bull-faced lie, because I witnessed it firsthand. So that's not the issue, and if only fans were buying them, and apparently every single fan on the internet deems it worthy to rip these toys a new butt, they clearly wouldn't be buying them either. So someone's got to be buying them, besides the small group of fans who still like the toys. So they got to be making the profits from somewhere. Um, secondly, Bandai is clearly okay with what they're doing, considering that if Bandai America wasn't doing a good enough job, 
Bandai Japan would be pretty ticked, since Bandai Japan is basically the holding group for Bandai America, so if Bandai America's not making in the good profits, then Bandai Japan is going to have a word with them. So Namkai, Namkai? That's their new name. Uh, Namco Bandai wouldn't be too pleased. So, basically what I'm saying is that these are children's toys made for American children and American parents who are on a American budget, which basically consists of nothing and food stamps. Um, not to totally rip on my country, but that's pretty much the state it's in. Uh, so yeah, it just not... it. I understand the argument. I understand the want for the Japanese toys, which are arguably better... Re and it's not even an argument. Better quality, better sounds, better everything at the core. Uh, but they, they cost more, and importing them costs money from Bandai, obviously. Um, and people say, well, why do they co make the money to make new molds? Because it's cheaper. It actually is cheaper to make new molds than it is to... Um, use the the Japanese molds directly. So if the Shinkano releases any indication, it wouldn't be profitable to do that. Uh, the Legacy Collection, uh, the Legacy Megazord is just the MMPR 2010 Megazord done and die cast with more paint. Um, that costs about uh, three times more. Uh, and that hasn't even really sold all that well. The Morpher only sold decently based on nostalgia and the fact that most people don't own Power Morphers. Um, plus, it's a pretty nice toy. And collector's piece, for that matter. Um, but even those started shelf warming after the second release. Um, pricey toys just don't particularly sell. And by bringing over the Japanese release toys you're looking at a bunch of toys that won't sell to kids. And that is their target market. That's their target audience. And those are the people who majorly... Majorly? That's not a word. Maybe. Whatever. Buy this stuff. And like I said countless times throughout this really long ramble, at the core, they do the same thing. The Legendary Morpher still flips open when you insert a key and it says the team name. Granted, there's no number pad, but at the core, it does the same thing. Legendary Megazord at the core does the same thing as Gokai. It is five bricks that makes a bigger brick. Uh, and the Saber is actually, I think, better than the um, the Gokai Saber. I don't like Troy's voice in it whatsoever. I think that was a really stupid choice. But uh, aesthetic-wise and toy-wise, I like it a lot more. I like the LEDs in the blade. I think it looks beautiful. So, uh, 20 minutes later, squeaky, uh, um, I, I'll try to just end this, I, I think I kind of rambled on enough about the topic matter, but basically, uh, too long didn't listen, even though at this point you have listened to the entire thing, it, it's not feasible, it's not economically feasible for them to bring over the Japanese toys here. Um, collectors are the only people who would really buy stuff that is that expensive. And honestly, for the most part, those people would already have owned the toy. Um, it's not hard to get Japanese toys. Amiami, HLJ, CS Toys, Hobby Search. Um, there's several other stores too, as well as some secondary sellers on Amazon or eBay. Oh, but Shuki, it's so pricey. Not really. Um, you're paying the retail price for the Japanese toys plus shipping. In most cases, you can ship sell. It's slow, but it's a lot cheaper. Uh, EMS honestly isn't all that much. Looking at um, Shinkano, I think it priced out to about $100 to ship it from Japan, EMS, um, with its base price. Uh, and at a 1 to 1 ratio, which wasn't the case at Shinkenger. Um, in fact, the exchange rate was a lot worse. But looking at it now, uh, you're looking at about $10 more to get Shinkano uh, compared to the, the the English release of Shinkano. It's not a whole lot of savings by asking them to import it. 
Um, same thing with Bluefin. At the core, Bluefin's releases are about the same price as if you were to buy them from AmiAmi and ship them. Um, but in, in, ignoring shipping, yes, it is more beneficial for them to just directly give you the toy. But if you want the toy that damn bad, then go buy it from a Japanese retailer. Like I said, it's not that hard. Uh, the exchange rate is one-to-one -one right now, so it's really not all that pricey. Uh, and it beats complaining that Bandai America is giving you shoddy products. Which, um, at the core, it isn't. It's giving you products that the core audience will actually uh, purchase and actually play with. And to wrap it all up, I think the Zord Builder concept is absolutely phenomenal. Um, kids these days kind of thrive off of creativity. Um, with my time at Toys R Us, I noticed most of the toys that sold were toys that were either customizable in some fashion... Um, like the art toys, Crayola products, um, things like that, or like customizable cars and things like that. Um, the toys that had a lot of creativity and freedom behind them were really the ones that were selling. And I, I think the Zord Builder collection that encompasses almost 40 years or over 40 years of product right now, I think it's great that you could put the Triceratops on the legendary Megazord's foot, or leg, as a leg, um, as well as the Bear Zord from Samurai on as a leg, and the Phoenix Zord from Megaforce as an arm, and um, go say Ultimate's arm on there, because why not, uh, is, is really great. And by having so many Zord Builder ports, um, just attaching different things, um, the bikes and the Zord vehicles, it's... Um, a really cool function that I'm really glad that they decided to do. Because uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the joint Gatai toys didn't really sell that well in Japan. Uh, so I was really sad to see that line end. Because it was really fun. Uh, so I, th I think kids really dig it myself. Um, I can't speak firsthand as I do not have any kids. Uh, nor do I really know too many kids. Because my family is kind of barren of kids that are the target audience. So I can't really speak firsthand, but I know as a kid it's what I would have liked to do. Um, and I I basically made crossovers in my head with all my toys all the time as a kid, so I don't know. Um, but that's my thoughts on the matter. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, thanks for listening. I know I'm completely expecting the hate comments to flow, and um, you know I'm actually perfectly fine with that. I mean... Uh, these are my thoughts on the matter. I know some people aren't going to agree. I know some people are going to continue to hate Bandai America and call their products crap. And that's um, fine, but I'm not going to... I'll call out a bad toy when I see it, and so far, uh, for the most part, I haven't really ran into too many uh, bad toys. The U.S. release of the Gokai Gun is probably going to be a bad toy, but I don't even know if I'm buying it. Um, but at the core, a lot of the toys that they're producing right now are in kind of a middle road to where they could definitely be better. They could definitely be improved. But um, at the core, I would assume that is what fit within uh, the budget, and that's what needed to be done in order to fit the price point and make the toy sell. So I'm not really going to complain all too much, unless the toy actually is absolutely crap and not fun, which is most of the basic weapon assortment because they're really just not fun. But that is a story for another day. Thanks for watching, everyone, uh, listening, rather. So uh, take care, have a great one, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Take care. Bye.